So, like, Cam Newton comes up in his scooter, a little skinny. And this is before, like, he goes to Auburn. This is before, you know, he was in Florida playing behind Tebow. Yeah. Come with these glasses, you know, look like a little nerd. I'm like, I didn't even know that was uh, uh, Cam Newton at first. He shakes my hand. You see, I'm Southside repping. Yeah. Big foot stepping. Zone three section, this guy flow perfection. Niggas hating on the church like I ain't blessed, they section. If we ain't talking money, I got a weak connection. That's on the hood. She said, get a bag, so I get it, got it good. Don't complain about my problems, I just put it in a wood. Seen a genie the other day, she said, nigga, make it good. So I wish for good health, then I wish to look. Is she not lieutenant? Key. Yep. Yeah. yeah, man. Are we good? We're rocking? Let's get into it, man. So... Welcome to another episode of Live on Lake Street. We got a very special guest today. We got a Southside legend, uh, former NFL football player. Ladies and gentlemen, we got Rashid Hageman in the building. So, no, man, I appreciate you for joining us. No, thank you for having me. Um, I got lots of questions for you, man. I'm ready. It's a, I mean, this is a big interview. In my Q &A, opinion, this is man. a big interview. So, I mean, originally we had talked about starting with the heavy stuff. I want to get to the heavy stuff. But let's talk about your accolades first. Right. So, so... From the beginning of let's talk let's talk about for now the beginning of your your athletic career. Okay. Initially, you were a ball player. You were a basketball that's, player. Yeah, that's how you know you're a South Sider. Yeah, you know, yeah. So, you were passionate about basketball. One hundred percent. How do you go from being? Pa I assume you were also probably pretty good. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. So, yeah. how did you go? How did you make the switch from basketball into football? So, I mean, uh, growing up, you know, everybody. You know, in my neighborhood, uh, South Minneapolis, you know, we played basketball mm -hmm. after school. So it was, you know, it was easy to run, uh, you know, play ball, but I was a little bit uh, athletic, you know. Um, played uh, serious basketball probably in seventh grade, traveling basketball for a while. And then um, I would play football just to condition, you know, because all the fellas would play football too, you know, at recess playing 500, throwing the ball up. You know, it's kind of just – I kind of got in – kind of – uh cordially walked into playing football but then um i want to say my eighth grade year is kind of when i uh implemented i wanted to play uh football because of the recruiting mm -hmm. you know you know my dad getting you know calls and letters in the mail from different colleges about football and even though i love basketball i still do to this day passionate you know um i had to make a, a choice and um yeah i, I guess High school is when uh, I made my first uh, stamp on football, you know, uh, playing varsity. And I was, I mean, I was still uh, hooping too, real serious, you know, playing Howard Pulley, traveling basketball, you know, as a young, uh, you know, just as a young bull. But, um, yeah, it, it was kind of up in the air, man. Anybody who knows me from Washburn, like, I really wasn't favoring either one. I was just, you know, being, you know, just, a, uh, you know, just an athlete. But, um I want to say uh, I think everybody knew I wanted to play football when, like, Wisconsin came in, like, 11, 12 deep. I mean, head coach, assistant coach, you know, came in, and everybody knew, like, eh, <laughs> what are all these coaches here for? Who was the head coach, yeah. the head coach then? Uh, Billman, I think. Okay. Uh, I don't want to uh, slaughter his name, but, uh, yeah, but he, he came 11, 12 deep, and they uh, sat me down. Actually, they came to my classroom. And they were like, Rasheed, somebody want to come talk to you. And, you know, usually when you hear that, it's like, ooh, what'd you do? <laughs> somebody like, man, I ain't do nothing. I'm over here doing my work, you know, just acting normal. But uh, Wisconsin came, and uh, I'm like, oh, okay. That's All serious. right, yeah, serious. Like, we want you to play football at Wisconsin. They showing me pictures in the stadium. I'm looking at Jenkins. I'm like, man, I didn't know me, you know, running full speed, knocking cats out on the field is going to get me, you know, opportunity to get a free – education and to play football yeah so i got a lot of uh offers in football you know just out of playing football just senior year sophomore year junior year, i was all american you know went to under armor game but um i think my first in to answer your question i'm all over the place i'm excited oh, it's all good but uh yeah but uh th to answer your question was when schools from different uh states would come to my school at washburn yeah. like penn state michigan that's michigan you, state that's like oh that. that's when i knew it was real and that's where i had to kind of tighten up you know uh look presentable yeah. you know i had to learn how to you know speak and you know because before that it was you know i was you know uh adolescence teen you know yep. in high school you know just trying to fit in my groove you know yeah. but um started taking it serious probably when they started coming to my school so when so you had 
at that point, you knew you had options. Had options. It wasn't yeah. just Wisconsin. No, it was all top, like every top, every Big Ten school, and then I had Florida. Florida, Oof. yeah, man. I took a trip down to Florida with uh, uh, Giovanni Jenkins, my uh, high school coach, my mentor. Mm -hmm. And I met, you know, Tim Tebow, and I met Hernandez. You feel me, Aaron you Hernandez? Met Aaron oh, Hernandez? yeah, yeah, man. This was like <laughs> back when Tebow, this is like before the two um, um, uh, championships he won. Championships he won at Florida, but um, but yeah, I met them and I toured the campus, and I'm like, man, like I can really change my life. You feel me? So, so after that trip, how do you, in how do you even come close to making the decision to stay at the U? Oh, man, how did you stay home after that? I just I can't imagine myself going to Florida, seeing all that. Because I mean, wouldn't that Cam was there too, I think. Yo, Cam so, was back yeah, in Tebow so at that Cam, time. Cam, Cam was, uh, Cam was like, uh, you got Superman, but what's his, uh, his disguise? Clark Kent or Clark Kent, yeah. Yep. So like Cam Noon comes up in his scooter, a little skinny, and this is before like he goes to Auburn. This is before yep. you know he was in Florida playing behind Tebow. Yeah. Come up with these glasses, you know, looking like a little nerd. I'm like. I don't even know that was t uh, uh, Cam Newton at first. Yeah. He shakes my hand, and he's, uh, you know, we're at a football camp in Florida, and he's chucking these balls, like, having kids, like, <laughs> these kids aren't going to catch these balls low-key, like, like the balls are hitting them in the face. and all somebody that. Else. Right. Yeah. But he's just winging it. I'm like, man, this is like, just seeing all these athletes and seeing who Tim Tebow was before Auburn and before, it was dope, man. But I think Percy Harvin would have been there. Percy Harvin was there, too. It was, I wasn't, like, like nobody really knew who those guys yeah. were yet. Yeah, from a uh, South Side like community, like we didn't idolize, like we didn't know the rosters of Florida. Yeah, we didn't know like the rosters. Like we was just like getting where you fit in. You yeah. feel me? So, but um, yeah, I just why did I stay home? I just wanted to rep a jersey that I was native to. That's beautiful. you feel me? Straight up. I, I just, wish more people would do that. Yeah, I just rocking Florida and like not being there. Or not being from there, it just felt weird. Like, I'm Minnesota. Minnesota raised me. And, you know, it, it, it's a definitely a gift and a curse, though. Yeah. You know, so, so. So, at that time, you were being recruited as a tight end, though. Yeah, big tight end, man. Yeah. So, being recruited as a tight end, how, how did you end up making the shift over to D-line? Like, whose decision was that? And, were, and did you, were you upset about that? Did I you was like very it? upset. Yeah. Very. So, college. They'll recruit you for the position you may like. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all a facade. Like, you may be – they may recruit you just to be an athlete because yep. they don't know where to put you. Mm -hmm. So when they, you know, recruited me, they were like, yeah, you're going to be, you know, uh, like Antonio Gates, you know, coming straight out playing tight end. Like, you're, you're going to be it. I'm like, okay. So when I signed to Minnesota, there was a practice where I was a little bit confused on the place the offensive plays, because if you ask anybody I used to play ball with in high school, I used to write the plays on my hands yeah. and, sharp, and sharpie, because yep. I would, you know, it's just too many numbers and XOs that go together. You know, it was hard. So uh, there was one practice where I was watching the DNs and the D-line one-on-one drills against the O-linemen. And uh, who was it? Uh, um, coach Lewis, my tight end coach, very, uh, he's from Florida too, very uh, aggressive, you know, voice, you know, angry, you know, he was like, what the heck you looking at? You supposed to be locking it over here. And when he seen me lock in, you know, watching the D line and all that, he winked at me and I didn't know what that meant. And then after practice, he introduced me to the D line coach. Mm -hmm. He was like, you know, welcome to the trenches. And I mean, I like, I love catching the football. I love being a center of attention. Like tight ends, what I do, you know, it's like, just like basketball, catching a rebound off the backboard, like, you know, but, it was a uh, like I felt like it was a a test. You feel me to uh, convert? Cause I wanted to be that Hulk. I wanted to be juggernaut. You know, playing in the trenches. But I didn't know it was just a whole different learning. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I took it and I ran with it, man. You know, just being you know athletic as I was. You know, I I implemented. A, I learned a lot of new things just playing D line. You yeah. feel me? So that kind of kind of paved the way just off that. But I was a little frustrated. But you know. It ended up. It seems like it ended up working out. It ended up working out for the, you know, the, I mean, the greater good. You yeah. know, I'm in this situation because of you know playing, you know, D line, and I got, luckily, you know, second round pick, and that's hard to do when you played a position for three years. You feel yeah. me? Well, so. you had a you had a decent uh, you had a decent run at the U. Yeah, decent I mean, I, run. Yeah, yeah. I wa and I, I watched for sure. I was yeah. a support. I was a watching that My team, man. watching you. My man. Specifically, yeah, it was sure. every week it was like what. 
What's Rashid going to do? What's he going to do? What's he going to do? <laughs> so much pressure. Yeah, so let's man. so let's fast forward a little bit now. So you had a, you had a career, good career at the U, and then draft day. So I know initially you were projected to be a first round pick. First round, yeah. So you were there with the, all the glam, the lights, lights everything, all the yeah, man. And, um, and then and then and then it didn't happen. The second day, yeah. Um, I think that's when I first my first sign of depression. Like, mm. like preparing your four or five years, you know, you got sports analysts telling you where you're going to be picked. Um, they're calling you like, Rashid, we want you at New York because there's a high chance you go first round. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, with all the bells and whistles, you know, we're all the cool gadgets, you know, being first round, you in New York. It was, it was, it was a little awkward because I've never – seen something so serious before, you feel me? Like it and just football being that serious, it was a little awkward, but it was just breathtaking. You, you know? had a pretty crazy draft class too. Yeah, man. There was some st- yeah. there was some real st- stars. Yeah, to this there. day, like Still you know, stars. I'm I'm watching Aaron Donald, I'm mm-hmm. watching Odell, I'm yeah. watching J- Jadavian Clowney, I'm yeah. watching uh Cleo Mack. We had like we had some studs and For I real. had to really like look back like there's still cats, you know, like in today's game, who are Aaron Donald? Like you just named, I mean, yeah. Aaron Donald, Khalil Mack. Yeah, you could argue both me and uh, best at that position in the league. Aaron, me and Aaron Donald, we played in the uh, Senior Bowl, mm. and we played on the D line together. And Aaron Donald was like um, the Atlanta Falcons were. It's like Senior Bowl is the two sorriest NFL teams yep. got to go and you know recruit. So or they, they coach. So uh, at that time it was the Falcons and the Jaguars, and. Uh, uh, me and Aaron Donald are doing drills, and Aaron Donald was like, yo, Coach Cox, he likes you, man. You're going to go to the Falcons. I'm like, man, I don't like this dude. He's just too aggressive, <laughs> man, and all that. And, you know, behold, it, it came true. He but called it. Yeah, he called it. But uh, And then he sent me a little uh, Twitter, like, yeah, I told you so. And this was before my, my, like my rookie year, yeah. you know, because we all knew each other just off of Senior Bowl and Combine. You know, we didn't see each other for a while. But, yeah, we had a fire class, though, man. Yeah, yeah very yeah, athletic class. Yeah. So, then, so one thing I want to mention just because it was cool, it was personally cool for me was the fact that the Falcons – were featured on Hard Knocks. Yeah, oh, your rookie man. season, man. It that, was cool coming off of watching you, being yeah. a fan of you as a Gopher, and now I get to see right away before the season even starts. That I was, already get that to was see like it. that was an like extra curveball. Like, okay, <laughs> on top of dealing with you know my coaching or the coaches, you gonna put a camera in front of me and I have to like act accordingly. Yeah. Nah, man, like. You were featured pretty heavy on there too. I should have got a check off that, man. Oh, for you didn't real. get a check? Nah. Oh. We had to sign a little uh, HBO, waiver and they give you a dollar, you know. But it's like, I really, I feel like I made that season, like, you know. You did. Because I, I, maybe just the South Side personality, I don't know. But, uh, but everything was organic, you know. It was like no fake stuff going on, but it was just, you know, like when I'm in the midst of, you know, being coached and, you know, it's, uh, you know, what? I'm over there cooking, trying to, you know, sharpen, sharpening my tools, like, you know, like, being recorded was kind of weird, you know, because I'm over here trying to get better and trying to, but now I have to act a certain way, I got to watch who I, how I talk, but um, I was really just being myself. Yeah. Anybody else knows from Southside or Minneapolis, like, that's Rasheed, like, yeah. singing, you know, art, you know, singing that music, you know, like, yeah. they, oh, yeah, that's Rasheed, you like, almost yeah, I almost said, you yeah, almost. I had to, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, but everybody knows that's Rasheed, yeah. you know, and uh, yeah. a lot of people were surprised, you know, because they didn't know my personality. But mm-hmm. it's like, man, that's Rasheed. You feel me? Yeah. Like, that's what he does. He, you know, he goofy, but, you know. I, was a cool, yeah. I thought it was a cool, it was a cool oh, introduction yeah. to you. It was the cool. A little nervous. Man, I was, man, I'm, I'm telling you, like, I'm putting on a, a T-shirt and I'm sweating it out before. Like, pff, that was nervous, man, just to be around you cameras it felt like uh a reality tv show you know yeah. i used to watch real world and road rules Challenge I mean, in a way that. it's the ultimate reality it because is, it man. is it is reality it like is, they're really man. out there just filming what you guys do it is yeah so. that was cool so let's we're gonna fast forward again let's go to year three mm. right off the i mean basically right that's that's a tough thing to accomplish right off the bat basically you're a super bowl contender year three you guys get to the super bowl and you got to face off against captain cool and the hoodie See now I'm getting I'm getting goosebumps right now, man. Yeah, you know, I mean. the, 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 the st- just the thinking about it, man. I mean, for anybody that doesn't know, Captain Cool is Tom Brady. Tom also Brady, known man. as the go- I mean, he's the greatest. He's the goat. All time. He's the goat. I'll yeah. give it to him. Yeah. If I had my hat off, I, I, if I had on, I'd take it off for him. Yeah. But um, 
how you, where you want to go with it. It's Man, wh- well, so first of all, just the just the fact that you know only three years in, you're already experiencing everything, even not even just the game, but the lead up to the mm, game, mm. which I know had to be just it was crazy, overwhelming. It was overwhelming because they really had barricades and dogs and put, like they had police in every type of form, like on horses, on bicycles, on skates. Like, yo, like, I'm like I, that's when I knew it was like, okay, just to protect our hotel. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm finna go to uh, somebody give me a sub. Hold up, you, you, you have to have a, uh, you know, security with you. Like, what? Like, but I mean, I, I get it. It was just overwhelming, but from the, the inside view, it was, you know, the outside looking in, it was super big, but the inside, you know, it was just another football game, but, you know, it was it was it was that game though. Like the game that like there's players to this day who's played for like fifteen, twenty years and Sweet. probably never played. Not even sniffed it. Not even sniffed it. Yep. And for it to happen in my third year I, I don't know, it's just I'm still to this day I can't I, I just can't put words. Yeah. It's just like like if I you know, it's it's a beautiful thing to accomplish, though. Yeah. You know, win or lose, just being there. I had my family there, you know. Uh, just even after the Super Bowl, it was a whole party with the Patriots and the Falcons because yeah. we accomplished something so cool. But at that time, I was just like, we lost. It's the worst thing that happened in my life, you know. But after, you know, looking back at it, you know, it was, it was – I mean, that's a goal that a lot of people work so hard to accomplish and they think it's going to happen. But that's why I kind of pride myself on, like, like I'm 31 and I played in the Super Bowl. Like I still have so much life to live. You yeah. feel me? So You've it's already like already done. Yeah, that. I'm already Super Bowl check. When so lose, it was yeah. was Bre- was Tom Brady at this party? Tom Brady was not at that party. Damn. No, 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 no. I definitely would have got grabbed a selfie. I would have went out of my body just. Yeah. Like even hitting him, like, are you okay? <laughs> like get up, I got you. You know what I'm saying? Put hands like on yo, man. You hey, know was that? Do you know? Do you remember? Was that an incomplete pass? It was an incomplete pass on that sack. Yep. Yeah, it was an incomplete pass. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, it was still you know a, a QB hit. You know. So. Are you smacking? Um, oh, for sure. Yeah, he yeah. felt that, and I think the center. That was like my first time going off on that center, and people don't know football terms. Center is a person who hikes the ball to the quarterback. Mm-hmm. Like it was my first bull rush, and ever like. Ever since that, the whole game, like he sat on me because he knew how like how strong I was. Yeah, yeah, right yeah man, it was. But it was cool. Yeah, I sacked Tom Brady, you know. But you know, I still gotta pay bills. Life, you know, keeps moving. That's true. Me, so, yeah. so, so now we gotta talk about the hard shit of that game, though. Yeah. So going into halftime, you're up twenty-four-three. It's looking like, yo, Falcons just beat Tom Brady, and then man. Tom Brady pulled up. Man, I was thinking about the parties, man. Yeah. You feel me, like yo, like. <laughs> You hit me up, hey, it's, we wasn't even thinking about the game. Yeah. I mean, but in the back that, of my head. That might have been part of the problem. Uh, in the back of my head, I was like, son ain't right. Like, Tom Brady, like, maybe he got in an argument with his girl. Like, yeah. I don't, I, some wasn't right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yep. and, like, we all had that, that, that common thought in the back of our head. And you can kind of see it. Because we were like, ah, yeah. Like, you know, like. It's like you play against the Bulls and Jordan, you know, is 0 for 5 in the first half, yep. you know, or 0 for 12. You're going to be, like, pretty sure he's going to turn it on. You feel me? True. Yeah. Yeah. So I knew in the back of my head, like, uh, Belichick and Tom Brady thinking, you know, second half plan. Man, second half. It was half. so dominant. The first half was so – it was oh, like – Oh, yeah, yeah. It wasn't like y'all just happened to be up 24-3, like – you guys kicked their ass. The first half, yeah. you kicked their ass. But that's the difference between, like, just the Patriot football and just, like, it's like the Patriots were, like, Rocky. Beat you up yep. until the last quarter, yep. and then once you're tired, you know, Brady puts the neck on you. And that's exactly what happened. I'm like, like, there was a point in time I tell my guys this all the time, like, t- Tom Brady was throwing these balls, and it, I, I, and they kept on hitting these uh, alleys every time to where, like, I low-key took a playoff just to watch him do this. Like, yeah. it's, it was super crazy. I'm just, like, I took a playoff just to watch him. Like, you know, I don't try to idolize him. I respect him. But it was just seeing seeing a master at work, you feel me? Like, seeing Picasso paint, you know, he in his zone. Like, I feel like the just to watch that kind of uh, – uh, 
just motivate me just uh, yeah. throughout life. Yeah. <laughs> Forget football. Like, yo, let's go out and accomplish something else because I've been seeing great people, you know, triumph and overcome. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I thought that was dope, man. So if I'm not mistaken, that ended up being the last – your last that was NFL my last football NFL, football NFL football game. So your last yeah. NFL football game yeah. was the Super Bowl, which Super Bowl. is that ain't nothing to not hang it's, your hat it's on. Not it's kind of dope. Nice little check, you know. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So, so, I think I want to let's get into the heavy shit a little bit here. So, from uh, from the outside looking in, that being your la- your final game as an NFL football player, the people that kind of know a little bit just from the media about what happened following right. that with you and your career, right? It looked like. You made a bunch of mistakes and squandered your career. Right. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah. Is that is that what happened? Is that an accurate portrayal? Or uh, I mean, it's it's accurate to a T. Um, um, you know, me and my uh, you know, my kid's uh, mother. She's a great mother, by the way. Um, you know, we get into arguments. You know, uh, just everyday stuff or whatever. Um, but this this incident kind of this incident happened before the Super Bowl. It was just like the Super Bowl run, maybe like the fifth, sixth game. You know, I had got arrested for uh domestic dispute or whatever. Um, you know, took it like a champ, you know, uh um obviously, you know, like I was, you know, guilty and wrong for, you know, my part and uh, vice versa. But uh we picked things up. I mean, you know, we strong, we cool, but um I think the outside world kind of what took place was, you know, me being outside in the regular world being you know, verbal, you know what I'm saying? So like, you know, me being outside yelling and screaming, of course it's gonna attract attention. Mm -hmm. And of course people are gonna put some type of, you know, um, some type of little spin on it. But at the end of the day, I mean, it was was a learning experience, but I wouldn't say that floundered or hurt my career, because I still, I definitely got a, um, that was probably the the tipping point of how thirsty I wanted to play football again, because I did, uh, my fourth year, so coming in after Super Bowl, I'm playing OTAs and getting ready for the season. That's when they cut me, you know. Mm-hmm. So then I was like, okay, well, now it's how how hungry do you want to play football? Because you were drafted, you know, you got football held to you on a super platter. Mm-hmm. Now you have an incident, a situation. How do you, you know, move on from that? So um, move back to Minnesota and uh, – trained at game face um and uh every day you feel me like i was you know of course depressed you feel me obviously you lose your job that you you know you played for like 23 22 years you feel me so but i mean like we all have uh challenges you feel me and i mean just like the whole super bowl like tom brady had a challenge too you know first half but it's just how you uh respond to it so i would say it, it hurt my career but you know how the spotlight is, and you can only conduct yourself a certain way because it makes the program look bad. You know, any type of uh, domestic uh, situations, you know, look bad, period, yeah. for any, uh, any uh, organization. So it was just really it was a business move, if you think about it. You know what I'm saying? Because they don't want that type of uh, attraction to, uh, you, know, uh, you know, tent, you know, their success. So, um, but, yeah, I, I guess long story short, um, I uh, got picked up by the Falcons again in 2019, yep. um, and uh, everything was good. I've been training, you know, from 2000, what, Super Bowl was 2017? Yep. So I was training for two years nonstop, you know, in my zone, working out, you know, fighting depression, you know, fighting all these feelings and fighting regular civilian life. You know what I'm saying? Imagine having your personal business oh, man. Oh. all out. But that's... I kind of, you know, I, I stick to my team, like my friends who yeah. are solid and kind of already know me. Okay. And uh, I didn't do too much clubbing. I didn't do too much, you know, interaction. I kind of stayed to myself, man. You know what? Now that you say that, I met you one time. When? There's no way you'd remember this, but it was outside of Privé. Okay. For the Mob Deep show. It was probably two, three. As a matter of fact, it was right after the Super Bowl. It could have been, yeah. It was right after the Super Bowl. Okay. I was out standing outside with my, with my wife, and you came walking up. I was like... I was like, that's what she Good first impression. And somebody else was standing out there that I knew that knew you. Right. And introduced. And I was like, yeah, I was like, I know. Uh, I know who I know yeah. who that is. Yeah. yeah. So, but um, yeah, I, I think the most challenging part of that whole situation was just the after storm of losing my job and have to, 
you know, go to the DMV and take a number and wait. And, mm -hmm. you know, just never did that before. You feel me? So yeah. I think that was my first wake up. So it was kind of a gift and a curse, man, if you think about it. Yeah. So, so it sounds like you made a fucking mistake. Yeah, and, you know, human. You and, know? It got, and it got yeah. a big spotlight put on it because of who you were. But like you said, we all make mistakes. We all make mistakes. It's just, you know, just people are at different statues, different levels. And yeah. because of I played a high professional level, you know, Anything and everything was going to be uh, posted, you know. People make money off of, of, uh, of videos and, you know, uh, just little insights or whatever. But, um, I mean, you know, moved on from it, bettered myself, um, learned a lot, you know, um, just uh, just the whole football, football anxiety and just learning how to change, you know, being temperamental in football is an excellent, is an A+. Mm -hmm. If you're temperamental in football, you're going places in football. That's a fact. Now – when you, you you know you don't have a job anymore and you still carry that how I put it it's like Rambo in a romantic movie yeah that's how I'm living my life now yeah, you gotta you, know what I'm saying? you gotta have that switch you gotta have that switch you know yeah. sometimes they want you, I, they want you to be a yeah. killer on the field but right you can't you know? be that in, in, yeah, at the so grocery store at the grocery store somebody oh Rashida and I, I might whoa you <laughs> right, know right you can't do that all the time you yeah. know but you know uh, I'm learning but uh, that was probably the biggest adjustment though for yeah. real. So, so do you, how do you feel, do you feel like the way that you were brought up? Because, I mean, I know you have, you had some, er, like, as a child, you had some, er, some tough shit in your life. Off the rip, yeah. Off the yeah, rip. Yeah, But then things kind of, I don't, I guess I don't know. You can, t I'll let you tell me, but do you feel like the way that you grew up, was that a big part in motivating you into becoming this kind of, the star athlete? Well, like, yeah. That so, for people that don't know, um, I mean, I grew up in foster care. Um, me and my younger brother, we, uh. And I don't like the violin sad story. I done told this story like a thousand times. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm cool with it. But uh, me and Xavier, you know, my younger brother were found in a crack house. That's my, son, my son's name, by the Xavier, way. Xavier, okay, boom, there we go. We already got something in common. But uh, me and Xavier were found in a crack house, boom. Child services grabbed us, brought us to Minnesota, and we were going back and forth from St. Paul to Minneapolis in foster care. Boom, boom, boom. Foster care is crazy. Head on a swivel. You know, we can get deep, but we won't. But um, we finally got adopted, and it was a successful adoption. Some yeah. adoptions ain't always successful, you know. So um, we finally got a su successful adoption. You know, Eric and Jill, you know, they saved our lives. Let's yeah. keep it real. You know, they put us, you know, they, you know, treated us, treated us like they were, you know, like I say love doesn't have a color. You feel me? Because obviously I'm big black. I have two white parents. You would have known that if I didn't tell you that. You feel right. me? Like you can't see the resemblance. Right. You know what I'm saying? But um. No, I just, I learned so much, and I learned, uh, they put me in a position where I could really exceed mm -hmm. in anything I wanted to do, yeah. you know what I'm saying? They gave me, you know, they, they food, shelter, clothes, everything, you know, and um, I feel like uh, they gave me opportunity to really uh, step out of the, the statistic world when it comes to, you know, the uh, typical, you know, uh, stereotypical African-American team mm -hmm. or African-American period, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, but, you know. They changed, they changed your odds. Yeah, oh, they, they definitely changed my odds. Yeah. But, you know, that's the gift and the curse of, like, going to a college at home. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, Rasheed Bowman, he might go to the league. Oh, the distant family, you know. Yeah. Hey, Rasheed, you see the water boy at the end. Yep. Where the, the dad, hey, Rasheed, hey, <laughs> hey, I'm your daddy, you know. Yeah, yep. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like that. So, I'm dealing, you know, I'm dealing with. Different sides of the family, but uh, you know Eric and Jill have been silent since day one. They never switched up and never changed. They've always been there, and they really gave me a uh, you know uh, a purpose, you know, to give to my kids. You yeah. feel me? Things we used to do for tradition, I'm trying to you know do that with my kids. So yeah. it's it's pretty cool, you know. It's a cool, it's a weird story, you know, just being adopted and. Uh, it's a rare, it's a rare. Yeah, it's a rare, story. but, but it's, it's yeah. a beautiful. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent, and that's why, like, I'm so I'm an open book because I didn't talk to so many kids and situations to where like, don't give up because, I like we had the similar situations, we have the similar, uh, you know, stories. So it's like um, things things yeah. at one point looked very bleak. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred percent, man. Yeah. yeah. So I feel like it's a it's a blessing. Xavier, you know, went to Juilliard's. You know, oh, he was a wow. dancer. So like, it was a fire story. You know, Rasheed plays football. Xavier is a choreographer. Graduate at Juilliard's, and I'm at Juilliard's at his graduation, and I'm just like. 
it's a whole different type of game of yeah. dancing, man. That's like, amazing. yo, like y'all are like. We might have to have him in here too. Really. Oh yeah, Xavier. Yeah, man. He's yeah. That, that's definitely my boy right there, man. Yeah. He's uh, he. I low key like to say I taught him how to dance. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I still got the moves or You're whatever. You're big brother, right? Yeah, I'm big yeah, brother. You can yeah. Take credit for so, but uh, yeah, man, it's, it's a pretty cool story, and I just kind of uh, use that as motivation towards you know the youth coach at Washburn right now. So, yeah. just letting them know what's up. So we can wrap this up, but I'm curious, just personally, you said you mentioned you're only 31, right? You only got three years of NFL on your body, and technically only. I mean, you played 20. Four games. Mm, I think, see, like I can't that. the math right now. Something like it's something plus like plus the playoffs. Yeah, and, you know, yeah, yeah. I play, you know, a good amount. I got beat up. Do you yeah. do you think it's possible for you to step back in at some point? Would you put your put your hat back in there? <sighs> see, and like I have, and I don't even want to say fans because I don't. I'm, I'm a humble. I'm a humble guy. Like let's I have. Say, let's say supporters. I have supporters come up yeah. to me and be like, "Yo, you know." You think about playing football again, and it's just like the PTSD in my head oh, of yeah. running full speed and banging my head. Like, I didn't, like, if I told you how many concussions I had, what, before the NFL, after you'd be like, oh, you, nah, you know what I'm saying? Be, yeah. Like, if you've seen the, the scars on my helmet, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, it, not worth, not it's worth not it. worth it, man. You know, like, you asked me earlier, like, Rashid, like, what made you change? basketball to football like sometimes it's like maybe I should have played basketball I'd probably be playing overseas right now you know what I'm might be in the league but it's just like I didn't think about NFL is you know it stands for not for long yeah for a reason yeah because either your body shuts down or you physically mentally so um the answer is no yeah no, no man <laughs> nah, man no nah, more nah, nah, no, no more, more. So I got we got to ask we ask everybody this question. I don't know how tuned in you are. I assume you're tuned in, but uh -oh. can you give me your top 3 Minnesota artists? Oh man. Man, man, man. Okay. Right now at this very right, yeah, currently. I mean, what however you want to do it. You can give me all time if you want. Hmm. Just don't say Prince. I'm not well, I'm not going to say Prince, but uh I'm I, I am going to who I'm listening to right now. Uh there's this cat over uh, on 30th Chicago, uh Ty Stick, Ty Stick. Tyrone. I used to go to and the funny part is I used to go to school with this dude. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. And, uh, you know, his friends tell me, like, he is musically gifted. Yes. Like, I wouldn't have thought that. You feel me? And, like, him making his music and, like, friends tell me he used to play the piano. You know, he used because, like, don't get me, like, Tyrone used to be in the streets. Yeah. But then, like, uh, my homeboy told me, like, he used to be in the streets. But then after, he would go play piano in front of all these other people. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's super dope. So, super I mean, I mean, I've been tuned in with him uh, for a while. Um and I still like my guy, um, Rocky Diamonds, man. I just that's a hot, that's a hot button. And the topic reason why right I now. say that, the reason why I say that is, me and Rocky got history. Like we played Howard Pulley traveling basketball, mm. and Rocky never came off as a, a rapper at all. You know what I'm saying? He came out as a hooper. Like so, we were always off of hoop, hoop, hooping vibes. And when he started rapping, I was like, off the strength, I'm a rock with it because me and you go back. You know what I'm saying? So like. Those two right now, I'm listening to, and I mean, I just, it's Minnesota, man. You feel yeah, me? Let's yeah. be real. Like, ain't too many people, you know, uh, really carving their name out there. And I'm not really uh, musically gifted to be giving, you know, advice. But like, them are the only two that are, you know, I will literally like YouTube listen to, or if they're, if, if I'm on their Instagram, I'll listen to the whole thing, or I'll let them know, like, yo, this is fire. You feel me? Like that, I'm actually in tune with. But um, I know there's some a lot of rappers. I'm, I, I, I I'm not mentioning it right now that I should be. I'm just off the top of the. Yeah, you definitely caught me off guard though. You definitely <laughs> did. Right. Yeah. So you got, we got two. We you, got two. How yeah. about you? Got, no, not one more. What about like Taylor J? Taylor J. If you're not in tune, we can get you in tune. I am in tune with Taylor, oh, Taylor J. St. Paul. St. Paul. Yeah. 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 You know what, Taylor J? I apologize because we go back to off of college, man. Okay. Yeah. So I actually went to uh, one of Taylor J's concerts. It's mm -hmm. crazy. It's all coming back. It was uh, like a festival, some food festival or some. But he was, was like, not sound, was it, sound it was a sound set at different, yeah. Um, yep. um, yeah. So I, yeah, I was there. I wasn't like in the stands, but I was, you know, with my food, rocking to his, uh, yeah. So uh, Taylor J, let's yeah. call, let's call him your third. He, he, yeah, he'll definitely be my third. Shout out to him. Uh, we definitely go back though. Just yeah. you, 
the U of M days, you okay. feel me? So yeah, yeah for so sure. What, so what do you got going on today? What do you what are you promoting today? What am I promoting? Sell uh, something. Sell something. Sell something. Well, right now, uh, Tommy McBriar, um, he has a uh, a Thanksgiving um, a Thanksgiving talent show. He's putting together the week of Thanksgiving, okay. and uh, me and him will be putting together some turkey drives too as well. Got to for sure, man. Um, I've been you know I've I've been in the cut after football, man. You know, just uh, working on properties and. Uh, Kind of giving back, you know, uh, what to promote. Uh, let's promote stop the violence. You feel me? Um, Especially the police. Yeah, for sure. Oh, we whole <laughs> we got whole episode for those. But um, yeah, right now, man. Uh, like, but you uh, definitely see me uh, in the uh, in the mist pretty soon. I'm just learning right now to not brag about what I got going on. Just keep it low key because it's going. It's yeah. you know. I do that all the time, and it just always f's up. Somebody wants to, you know, uh, I know have exactly. their input. I know yeah, I'm exactly just keeping them low key saying. now, man, because yep. I don't want, you know. But uh, you go. I'm definitely gonna pop out though. I definitely got a, you know, a little, ah, a little. That's I don't right. even want to say it. You, you feel it. me? But yeah, something's popping up though for sure. Right. Something's gonna be shaking. And where can I find you? Uh, the real Rashid uh, off Instagram. Uh, Rashid Hegman on Facebook. Uh, I ain't really got too many, you know. Uh, AKA names, you know, just Rashid Hagman on any social media, but I'm definitely tuned in on my Instagram and Facebook for sure. Cool. I appreciate you doing Oh, that. no, I appreciate it's y'all fun. having me, man. It's, it's dope. Fun. I like it. It's been another episode of Live on Lake Street. I'm Jake Faircloth. You can follow me on Twitter at Jake Faircloth. Follow me on Instagram at Jake Faircloth1. And don't forget to like our Facebook page, Live on Lake Street. That's it. We out. Peace. Damn, what it? In high school, I let it bam, what it? I wasn't playing, what it? I'm coming straight out the south. Hey, genius, best watch your mouth. When I pull up on PNB Rock, that nigga ain't even come out. You moving ounces, I just moved a hundred things in a drought. You're on the south side, outside the fence of your house. You talking all.